to Connect Kids. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Let's get ready to sing, dance, and celebrate Jesus in I put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. First things first, got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news The armor of God and the shield of faith Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one Put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God First things first, you got the bell to truth. Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on. Against the evil one, I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. Now in faith we can stand, stand, stand against every evil plan, plan, plan. Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong. He has won. I put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. Against the evil one, I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. Wow, great job worshiping. Let's take a seat and focus on our video. Let me tell you about this guy in the Bible whose thoughts got him into a lot of trouble. Happens to the best of us. Who was it? A guy named Samson. Oh yeah, Sammy Sam. Wasn't he that superhero guy? Yeah, kinda. God had given him the gift of supernatural strength. So strong that he lifted up Noah's Ark with all of the animals inside and was like, come at me, rain. Nah, dude. Samson lived after Noah. But to really understand why God gave Samson his special strength, let's go back to when he was a baby. Wait, he had supernatural baby strength? Awesome. Even as a tiny baby, Samson was set apart for a special plan God had for him. Before Samson was even born, God sent an angel to his mom to tell her that she would have a son who would bring God's people victory over their enemies. Lex Luthor? Darth Vader? Cruella de Vil? Nope. Their enemies were, wait for it, the Philistines. The Philistines? Who were they? They were a really strong group of warriors. But in order for Samson to keep his special supernatural strength and help save God's people, there were a few rules he had to follow. Like, don't eat SpaghettiOs in bed, or don't run up an escalator, or never, ever throw cheese at a moving ceiling fan? No, rules like don't eat any unclean food. Oh no! Sammy Sam was having to throw his pizza into the dishwasher before he ate it? Poor guy. No, unclean food back in Samson's day meant that you couldn't eat food from pigs. Hold up! You're telling me Samson couldn't eat bacon? Or barbecue sandwiches? Yep, no bacon or barbecue, or pork chops, or Uncle Carl's famous honey ham. It was all off limits. Sheesh! Well, the other really important rule for Samson was that he couldn't cut his hair. Like, ever? Yeah, if he cut his hair, he could kiss his supernatural strength goodbye. I bet Sammy Sam was trying out some awesome hairstyles, like the super slick back, extreme mohawk, or mega triple man bun. Uh, I kind of doubt that. As Samson grew up, the Spirit of God came upon him many times, giving him great strength to fight the Philistines. But he kept breaking the rules God had given him, and he didn't care about pleasing his parents either. It all started with Samson wanting to marry a Philistine woman. Wait, a Philistine woman? He wanted to marry the enemy? Exactly. 
His parents tried to tell him that this wouldn't please God, but all Samson cared about doing was what he wanted to do. So he married her anyways. Over the years, Samson fell in love with not one, but two Philistine women. And one of them was named Delilah. So did Samson and this new lady live happily ever after? Not quite. The Philistines were dying to know the secret behind Samson's special strength. And they paid Delilah some money to find out for them. And she fell for it, didn't she? Yep. She tried to trick Samson into telling her where his strength came from, and she nagged him until he finally gave in. Instead of thinking about what would please God, he gave in to the pressure and revealed his big secret. If you shave my head, I won't be strong anymore. Oof. Not smart. Big mistake, buddy. It really was. While he was asleep, Delilah had someone cut off seven braids from his head. When Samson woke up, the Philistines put him in chains and he couldn't break out. Super strength gone. Mega bummer. So did he go from that superhero life to spending the rest of his days in prison? Well, while Samson was in prison, his hair began to grow back. And one day, the Philistines brought Samson out and chained him to the pillar of their temple. There were 3,000 Philistines and many of their leaders inside. I bet Sammy Sam was really wishing he had that super strength right about now. He was. So he prayed and asked God to make him strong just one more time. Then he put one hand on one pillar, the other hand on the other pillar, and started to push. He said, let me die together with the Philistines. And he gave it all he had. Whoa, seriously? The temple came crumbling down on Samson along with the Philistines and their leaders. And the super strength returns. <laughs> Sammy Sam is back in action. See you, fellas. Samson actually defeated more Philistines on the day he died than he ever did while he was alive. And even though many of Samson's thoughts and actions didn't please God, God still used Samson to give his people victory over their enemy. I guess God has a way of doing that, huh? He really does. Samson's story shows us that we can all be tempted or pressured to think about wrong things that will make ourselves or other people happy. And when we do that, we miss out on the good plans God has for us. Instead of giving in, we can ask God to help us catch those thoughts and focus on what pleases Him. Meet Maylee. Maylee gets invited to a sleepover at her friend Sadie's house. But as they're getting settled in for the night, Sadie says that she wants to sneak and watch a movie that her mom says is off limits. Maylee knows her parents wouldn't allow her to watch it either. She wants to suggest another movie, but she worries Sadie will get mad. Plus, she thinks, is it really that big of a deal? What's the harm in watching it just this one time? Maylee can continue to let her thoughts spiral out of control and choose to watch the movie, knowing that it won't please God or her parents. On second thought, if mom and dad find out, will they ever be able to trust her? Oh no, she'll never be allowed to leave the house ever again let alone go to another birthday party. Or, Maylee can catch her thoughts and check them by thinking about what pleases God. Like, God chose us to live pure lives. Or, am I trying to please people? If I was, I would not be serving Christ. After Maylee checks her thoughts, she can let God change the way she's thinking, speak up for what she knows is right, and tell her new friends that she would rather watch something else. The world tells us that it's more important to think about what others think instead of thinking about what pleases God. But when we let God help us change our thoughts and focus on things that please Him, it will lead to what's best for us and maybe even help others make the right decisions too. Whoa, what a cool video. We hope that you learned something fun and interesting, and you can take it home to share with your friends and family. We hope to see you next time here at Connect Kids. Have a great week.